My name is Lema Bowie. I am a Liberian peace activist. I won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2011. I am currently affiliated with the program that we're about to launch, the Women, Peace and Security Program, at the Advanced Consortium on Cooperation, Conflict and Complexity, AC4, at the Earth Institute. So this is like a cross-learning, interlink kind of learning. Whilst we're hoping to bring grassroots women to Colombia, we're hoping that the students can also go into the community and learn a lot from them. So the, the rationale behind this program is that women peace builders are not just the ones you see in suits at the UN, but they're also peace builders in the community, in the villages. Those are the ones who are nurturing and sustaining their societies. Well, we just came back from Mozambique and we will look at work in Africa, we'll look at work in Asia. I'm also most interested in work in the U.S., especially at local levels within inner city, in um, urban areas, and in rural communities. Because again, like I said, peace and security for women is not necessarily in war, but it's also those things that hamper the peace and security needs of women. It could be housing, it could be health care, it could be reproductive health, it could be anything. So I came so far from where I started because as a child I always wanted to be a pediatrician. And so my life experience is actually one of the reasons I do this work. As a 17-year-old girl, my country, Liberia, went to war. And I went around with a deep, seated anger, anger at my community for not protecting me from the war, anger at my community for all of the double standards that I saw because I was socialized to believe that we were one people. In the middle of the war, we started getting things like, you can't interact with this ethnic group and you can't interact with that ethnic group. But then the main thing that drew me to this work was working with child soldiers. And these were the people that I hated the most when I started um, my journey as a refugee, as an internally displaced person. Once I started engaging with these young people, I recognized that they were victims also like myself. And there was a need for me to do something. And the way I tell the story is that I told myself there was no chance of me going back to medical school um, because I felt like it was too late to go back to school, even though I was still quite young. And so since I wasn't going to be healing the bodies of sick people, I wanted to do something to heal the minds of the child soldiers. Once I started working with them, I recognized that it was important for someone to use their voice to stand up to those who were actually funding the war. And that's how my journey kind of morphed from wanting to be a doctor to wanting to be a, a trauma healer and then into direct activism where I speak truth to power. In 2003, when the war ended in Liberia, it was time to disarm the soldiers. And in a particular community, there was these about 80 or 85 young men who had been fighters. But people in the community did not know that they were fighters. They would leave early morning and go into neighboring communities, take their arms, fight, wreak havoc, and come back to their families. Eventually, the mothers found out what they were doing, and it was time to disarm the fighters. Two things. If they publicly took these boys to be disarmed, the community would mob them. So, because there was this real deep-seated anger and the community was really divided, the mothers came to the peace activists, I was part of the group, and asked us if we could escort their sons to go and be disarmed. So that morning, we came into communities, went into the homes that had been identified, and we put all of the guns in rice bags, so sacks, the sacks that had the rice, we put the guns in them, brought pickups, put those guns in there, and the boys had walked like distances and where we had cars. So we picked them up along the way and took them to the cantonment site where they were to be disarmed. But one of the things that our action did was to keep the peace of that community because mothers were really afraid that their sons would be killed, but also to take these boys to get the help and the opportunities they needed as soldiers who had fought the war. So um, what we're trying to do 
with the Women, Peace and Security Program at the Earth Institute is basically taking these stories from anecdote into document, linking it up with um, academia so that you can tease out the theories, the strategies, and the tactics and all of these things and put it into actual peace building languages. But also take students from here to say it's not just in textbook. This is the reality of the world of conflict, of the world of peace and the world of winning peace and security. Thank you.